Hi, I'm Chris from Sailing Vessel Navigator in the West Indies. So far in this series, we've learned how to plot a line of position from the sun. In this episode, we'll learn how to use two lines of position to plot a running fix. Along the way, we'll revisit the noon site for a deeper understanding of what's actually going on. The running fix is not something we typically use on a day-to-day -day basis, so let's take a minute to review. Here's how it's done. Imagine it's 0200 and visibility is low. You're inbound to Georgetown and you fixed your position using Georgetown light labeled G and another light. But as you're closing to your turn point, only Georgetown light is visible. What you can do is shoot another bearing to Georgetown light and then advance your earlier bearing to it. So at 0300, you shoot another bearing and plot it out. You can then advance your 0200 LOP to 0300 and get a running fix, which should give you a pretty good idea of where you are. The way you advance an LOP is to pick one spot on the LOP. I prefer something out of the way and I like to draw a little circle. Now advance that circle in the direction and distance that you've run in the time elapsed. In this example, we've run one hour at four knots on a course of 180 degrees true. So we need to advance our LOP four miles in the direction of 180. We measure off four miles and 180 degrees and draw a new circle. I like to make little hash marks showing the advancement of the LOP. Now we parallel the first LOP to the time of the second and draw it. Now where the second LOP and the advanced first LOP cross is your running fix. Be sure to label everything properly. Technically it would be an estimated position because it's a bit more unreliable than a fix. But if it's all you've got to work with, then that's what you go with. You might have noticed that during the last two episodes, all of our examples have been in the northern and western hemisphere, and they've also been afternoon sites. In this episode, we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to be on a voyage from Auckland to Sydney in the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere doesn't actually make too much of a difference. What does make a difference is that we're going to do morning sites, and we're going to do them in the eastern hemisphere. So there's two main issues to talk about. The first is the morning sites. If our assumed position is somewhere between Auckland and Sydney, we're going to have the sun to our east. So the GP will be to our east, and that'll change the triangle a little bit. So we'll talk about that when we get to it. The second difference involves the local hour angle. You need to remember that local hour angle is always calculated westward from your position. So LHA is not this angle in this case. It's calculated all the way around the globe and back. So it becomes a little bit of a headache in the math. But the way to remember it is that LHA in the Eastern Hemisphere is GHA plus longitude. An easy way to remember it is that there's many more people living in the Eastern Hemisphere than the Western. So Eastern is plus, Western is minus. Okay, let's look at an example to get this down. It's January and we're bound for Sydney. Our DR position is as indicated and I've solved steps one and two for you. In step three, our triangle looks a little different this time, but fear not, think it through and you'll be fine. In this case, the sun is to our east, since it's local morning time, and we're also using the south pole. But we still need the same information to make HO229 work. Our latitude will be 35 degrees south, which is the nearest whole latitude. Our declination is not a whole number, so we'll use 22 whole degrees and an increment of 45 minutes that we'll correct for later. We're in the Eastern Hemisphere, so LHA is GHA plus longitude, but we want it to work out to a whole number, and the assumed position is arbitrary, so let's pick 159 degrees and 11.3 minutes. A common error in the Eastern Hemisphere is to forget that the two minute portions of the math add up to a whole degree, and that needs to be accounted for. I've probably missed my LHA by one degree a thousand times, so watch out for that. Now into HO229 for our answers. The computed height is 30 degrees, 46.3 minutes. Our D number, which will help us account for our declination increments, is plus 28.6, and our azimuth angle, or the bearing to the sun, is 83.4 degrees. That seems close to right, but we should apply our rules, and we see that the actual azimuth angle is 180 minus Z, or 96.6 .6 degrees true. So to account for the leftover declination increments, we could use that crazy interpolation table in the front of HO229, but this is a time where I think the math is easier. Think about it, the table accounts for portions of declination left over, so it's always something between 0 and 60 minutes hanging out there, and the way the table works is by comparing ratios. So if we took the declination increments, divided it by 60, that allows us to express the declination increments as a percentage or a ratio. And then if we multiplied by the D number, we'll get our answer. 
Trust me, it works out the same either way, so do whatever you're more comfortable with. The tables, or the declination increment divided by 60 times the D number. Moving on, we apply the D number correction to our computed height and end up with a computed height of 31 degrees, 07.8 minutes. We compare it to our observed height of 31 degrees, and we get a difference of 7.8 minutes. Is it towards or away? Right, it's away in this case. Let's plot it, which should be a familiar concept by this point. So we've gotten pretty good at getting an LOP from the sun at any time of day. Let's let a couple of hours go by while we steer course 270 degrees true at a speed of 10 knots and the sun gets higher in the sky. Eventually we'll notice it's directly to our north or on our meridian. We know that we can determine our latitude at local noon, so we shoot the sun and after correcting the sextant we get an observed height of 77 degrees and 30 minutes. We quickly determine our zenith distance, which is 90 degrees minus the sextant height to be 12 degrees, 30 minutes, and we look up the declination of the sun in the nautical almanac, and that turns out to be 22 degrees, 45 decimal 5 minutes south. We draw our typical picture and we see that the latitude will be equal to zenith distance plus declination. and the math gives us an answer of 35 degrees and 15.5 minutes south for a latitude. But hold on, what if we drew our picture a different way? This time the picture represents the same concept, but shows the sun, us, and the south pole directly in a line. The sun is on our meridian. In the morning example, the sun was to our east and there was a clear triangle. What I want to show you is that the triangle is always in motion and at noon, it collapses into a line. This is why the math is so easy, there's no triangle to solve. So hopefully that gives you a deeper understanding of the noon site and why it's so special. Let's plot our latitude, which is straightforward enough. Now it's time to advance the morning sun line to the time of the noon site and fix our position, being careful to label everything properly. In this episode, we've combined two lines of position from the sun into a running fix to determine our position at sea. Along the way, we've talked about what to do when the sun is to your east for morning sights, and we've revisited the noon site for latitude for a deeper understanding. Practice what you've learned, refer to the notes below, and when you're ready, we'll move on.